Hey, what up squad? It's your boy KFlow. And in this video, we're going to be installing an onboard air compressor to power the air lockers, inflate tires, and inflate other things. Now let's get this thing started. So I hope you enjoyed that little intro there, guys. It was definitely quite funny to make, at least for my end. I thought it was freaking hilarious. But anyways, for those of you guys who are new to this channel, this channel makes the most in-depth Toyota Tacoma DIY tutorials. So make sure you smash that like and subscribe button, baby, and hit that notification bell too so that you're up to date with my latest video releases. And before we move forward with this video, I just wanna give a quick shout out to Tuan Nguyen, and Chris Mount for the very generous beer donation. So what we're drinking today is, this is another Cape May Brewing Company brewski. This one is a chocolate covered strawberry milkshake IPA. Yes, it definitely sounds ridiculous. The reason this caught my eye is, I've never had a chocolate IPA, let alone a strawberry flavored chocolate milkshake IPA. I've had the stouts. Chocolate stouts are awesome. So this will definitely be a very interesting experience for me. So let's crack one of these things open. Cheers, everybody. Oh wow, that's surprisingly good. It's very light. It's not super hoppy like a traditional IPA. It's Definitely quite a, a nice surprise. It's almost like a dessert beer. And yes, as I said, this definitely looks and sounds ridiculous. And if you do have a chance to hit up Cape May Brewing Company, check out, check this thing out. Chocolate covered strawberry milkshake IPA. Pretty damn good. Surprisingly good. And again, thanks Chris and Tuan for your generous beer donation. So now let's get right into the video guys. This is part five of the regearing series. And if you haven't watched part one to part four, I highly advise that you guys do that. So just to recap everything that we did, part one was basically regearing 101. I show you guys what it is to have a different type of gear ratio on your truck and what the gearing means from 4.88 to 5.29, everything in between. So. The, that goes more into the theory of the stuff and when we went to the part two and part three and four that was more of the technical installation stuff so we went and installed the rear diff we took apart the front diff and installed the new diff with the air lockers also in a previous video guys if you haven't checked it out yet I highly advise you check out another video that I put together which is the installation of the lighting system on the truck 
because I go over the technical details of electrical wiring for the gang box that I have installed on this truck. And if you remember, I left the bottom three switches of the controller on that relay box open for this specific purpose because we'll be using all three, the two for the front and the back lockers and the third one to operate the air compressor itself. So now this video is the continuation of all that to tie everything together. So make sure you drink some coffee guys because this stuff will get technical. Knowledge. This video will be set up a little bit differently. I'll be talking about the completed setup and then work backwards and forwards so you get at least a better understanding of why and how I did some of these things. So now let's diagram this whole thing out so you get a better understanding. So here's the quick diagram guys. Here's our rear diff. Here's our front diff. There's going to be hoses coming out of both and they'll both have to be connected to an air compressor. Just like that. We can't have air running through the system this whole time because that means both front and rear diff will be locked. So we'll need to have a gate, which is the solenoids. So that's where the solenoids come in guys. That allows airflow to go to the diff and also work as a gate so that it stops airflow as well and relieves the pressure from those two to open up those differentials. And in order to control those solenoids, that's where the controller comes in. That controller will power all the solenoids, just like that. And it will also control the air compressor, just like that. So now let's talk about what I do have, guys. I have the Smitty Belt Air Compressor, which is a high flow rate air compressor, almost comparable to the ARB Twin Piston Air Compressor at less than a quarter of the price. This, along with all the items that I used in this video, will be on my Amazon storefront. So make sure you check that out at amazon.kflow-script.com. And to point out, the Smitty Belt Air Compressor puts out 5.65 CFM of air while the ARB air compressor puts out about 6.16 CFM. I also do have the solenoids that controls the air lockers and that came with the purchase. Last but not least, I do have that relay box as I mentioned earlier. Now bear with me guys because this video will get a little bit complicated and I will do my best to explain it as fully as possible. This overall explanation will be broken down to three main parts. We'll have the air compressor system as part one, We'll have the solenoids as part two, and then we'll have the relay box as part three. And each of those subsystems will be broken down to plumbing, routing, electrical, and mounting. Give this people air. So now let's talk about the air system, guys. This is probably the most complicated part of the whole thing, but it really isn't that bad. So here's the air compressor guys. This one is the one made by Smitty Belt. And the way it works is as soon as the switch on the control panel on the driver's side is turned on, this thing will turn on and start pumping air right through this hose and into that manifold. This hose is actually the existing hose and I just snipped it and put it on a barbed connection right there along with a check valve so there's only one way flow and no back flow. Once the air comes in from the pump, it goes into this manifold and actually splits three ways. The first one is that it goes down this other tube and then into this half gallon air tank. And this is actually used for an air horn, but it works really well for this application. This air tank will start filling up with pressure until it reaches 115 PSI. And that's what this pressure sensor is for. Once this whole system fills up with 115 PSI, it stops pumping in any more air. This tank acts as a buffer to keep half gallon of air pressurized into the system so that the pump isn't constantly going on and off. The second split goes to the bottom here and this is a push to connect fitting so that this part of the hose goes directly to the solenoids under the hood. And we'll get more into that a little bit later. The third part where it splits is this upper fitting here. This is a female quick connect coupler so that I can couple it to an air hose to fill up the tires. These other two ports that you see here are pretty much just used as blanks and as a safety. 
this upper fitting here is a pressure relief valve to relieve any pressure from the system if it reaches past 150 psi. This is just a cap. This pressure switch is directly connected to the pump, so it only turns on if the pressure goes below 90 psi and it will turn off once the pressure goes above 115 psi. Now the power connection from the pump is this wire here, as you can see, it goes to the black and red, it's looped around and it goes underneath the truck. There's actually a grommet right under there, so you can see where the positive and negative from the battery connects to the pump right behind this tank. And from that same grommet, I also routed this hose going to the solenoids. Now let's go underneath the truck and I'll show you where it continues. So there's the grommet guys. As I mentioned, we had the positive, the negative, and the tube going to the solenoids. That continues to this part of the frame where I used pretty much a hose as a way to protect the wires from chafing because this sheet metal here is actually kind of sharp. So while we're here under the truck, here's the rear and that's the air hose going to the rear lockers. So you can see there's a loop and it follows and continues along this gas tank here and as you can see here that hose continues and meets with the wire and the hose from the cabin and all four continue along the body as you see there and there's the hose for the front diff and it continues in between the front diff and the transmission and all those hoses actually continue up the frame and right behind this mud guard and into the engine bay. To finish up the electrical, the positive for the pump, it goes into this 120 amp relay. And then that relay is connected to the positive of this battery. The negative from the pump is connected to that body ground there. And that relay is then wired up, around, and into the relay box, which is the number six switch on the relay box. So now let's go back and take a look at this diagram, guys. Now we have the battery here, which is connected to the compressor via the relay. And this relay is now controlled by our relay box controller. So that setup basically becomes a double switch setup, where you have the switch from the main relay box turning on and switching on the relay that powers the air compressor. So you'll probably ask why I went with a relay instead of connecting directly to the relay box. And here's the quick answer guys. The relay box, each of those relays in there can only handle 30 amps. And the Smitty Belt air compressor pulls 45 amps. So if you're going to route directly to the relay box, you're just gonna keep blowing some fuses. That's why I went with a separate 120 amp relay because that can definitely handle the current coming from the air compressor. So the air compressor does get a little bit noisy when you're running it, but once that air tank fills to the proper PSI, that whole thing shuts off anyway. So it's really not that big of a deal. But I think in the future, I will put some type of sound deadening shield around the whole thing. I also just wanted to point out, if you are doing this wiring, make sure you're using the proper wire gauge because you don't want the wire itself to be burning up because it's pulling up too much amps. So here's a chart that you guys can follow for wiring everything from the air compressor itself to any of the smaller stuff on your truck. So for this standard, my wire run was only like seven, a little over seven feet. And I was using a 12 gauge wire, which was plenty so that it can handle all the electricity flowing through that system. Back. I want to fit this air compressor and permanently mount it somewhere in this region and I'll have to remove these plastic panels to make more room. It looks like for now there's only three 10 millimeter bolts that we'll have to remove. So it looks like this driver's side piece sits on top 
of the passenger side piece. So I'll also have to remove these three bolts holding this thing down. I'll have to remove this back portion of the seats too. And those are 14 millimeter bolts. So now we should be able to pull this back piece off completely. So now let's do the same thing at the opposite side. Alrighty guys, look at that. In comparison, without those plastic backing pieces, now we have a huge amount of real estate that can be used for mounting. I'm definitely gonna put up some molly panels or some storage solutions back here. And I will have to also put some type of dynamatting, some soundproofing in this area because it's just a sheet metal between here and the outside. But yeah, test fitting that air compressor. Now there's so much more room. Now with removing that back piece, guys, I did notice that right over there, there's a grommet. That grommet leads right to the outside of the truck. So basically I'm gonna use that as a port for power as well as the air going to the front solenoids. Alrighty guys, so here's where we're at now. There's the air compressor and this is the air tank which will act as the buffer for the compressed air system. Right now, it's, everything's just sitting on top and I think this is where I'm going to hard mount everything. I'm here on the passenger side of the truck. So, I know there is a grommet like right in this general area so I can route the air back to the front solenoids. So what I'm going to do now is work on getting these hard mounted and also work on the piping. This compressed air tank does come with some of the fittings which is pretty nice. All these will be linked in my Amazon page. Alright guys. All I did was remove the four bolts holding the space of the air compressor. So you can see here, and this at least helps me figure out what's going on electronically. So there's a circuit breaker here. It looks like there's already a relay also. So that's good, that's good news. Got a relay there, and this is the toggle switch. And looking at the wiring and tracing it out, it looks like as soon as you turn this toggle switch on, it closes the ground on the relay so that it triggers the motor to turn on. So right after the switch, I'm going to pretty much cut it in half and then trigger the pressure switch on the tank. Because the idea here is I want this air compressor to turn on anytime that pressure sensor tells it to turn on. And what this does is, if the pressure goes below 90 PSI, it turns the system on, and when it gets to 115, it turns the system off. So here's a diagram to further clarify what's going on, guys. This is our power source, which is the battery, the pump, and these three parts are what we saw inside the pump itself, which makes the circuit of the pump. So this one is the toggle switch, this is the relay, and this is the circuit breaker. So what's happening is, as soon as we close the toggle switch, when we turn the switch on, it closes this circuit. What it does is it energizes the coil in the relay. So you can see, this is the positive, this is the negative, and closing this energizes this coil, which closes this positive circuit here. So this circuit closes, and that allows the electricity to flow from the battery into the circuit breaker, through the relay, and into the pump. So once you turn this on, it turns on the pump. And this pump starts pumping air into the air tank. So this is the symbol for a pressure switch, and we'll want to integrate that into the circuit. So what we're going to do is cut the circuit here at this point between the toggle switch and the relay, just like that. And then we're going to solder on connections onto the pressure switch so that the circuit now looks like this. This switch will be on all the time and this will be the main power switch for the air pump. But what happens is when you close this, this completes this circuit 
and this pump is normally closed so this whole circuit is complete and this coil will be energized as long as this pressure switch is activated. Now once the air starts pumping into the air tank and the air tank reaches 115 psi this pressure switch will open and it will also open the circuit further stopping the pump from running and when this pressure switch goes below 90 psi it will close and the cycle will continue so this is how it ended up guys I have this dongle coming out of the same grommet that this cable, this existing cable that goes into the battery goes out. So keeping it clean. I had just enough so I can put some speed connectors on here to mount on this pressure switch. So here's a quick update. I'm still waiting for parts from Amazon. So what I did was I removed this mounting plate off of the bottom of this air compressor. So I will be reusing these rubber feet, but this compressor will be hard mounted to sheet metal and I'll be using these self-tapping sheet metal screws, which is pretty much the same size as the existing screws that was on it. And I'll reuse the feet to work as shock absorbance and should be good to go. So I did mark and drill four pilot holes here. And now I'm going to drive in those sheet metal screws to get some thread started and then mount that air compressor. The only other thing I'm going to add to is before I do a full mount of the air compressor, I am going to put silicon in all those parts so that we don't get water intrusion and it also protects the paint. All right guys, rock solid. All right guys, so that's what it looks like now. Alrighty guys, so there it is mounted. I initially wanted this mounted on this bracket here, but this was way too flimsy and it was flopping. So I ended up having to actually use this bracket instead. And luckily there's already existing nut certs in there, as you see, and those are M6 dash one screws so I was able to mount this thing pretty solid on there and a flashback so now let's talk about solenoids guys and for those of you who don't know what solenoids are these are basically electrical valves which allows you to electronically control the flow of air or any other fluids so in this case we're controlling the flow of air into the lockers so a solenoid is very similar to a relay. So here's how the solenoid works when the coil is not energized yet. We have the diff open the air just like this. And when the coil is energized, this is what happens. The plunger closes the outlet and it allows for a one-way flow from the pump and into the diff. Now the hoses continue from that frame I showed you earlier and this is the hose for the pump and it goes to that end of the solenoid system the one to the rear that one is connected to the rear diff and the one in the front is connected to the front diff now let's take a closer look so that's the solenoid system guys so these solenoids actually require 12 volts to be switched on and off and as you can see I have two of them connected together and that's the negative so as you can see the ones on the right are the negative and the ones on the left are two positives positives. and what I did was I had the two positives they're on separate wires and they're routed along the top there up that portion of the engine bay and connected to four and five on this gang box here Ashback. alrighty guys so these are what the air solenoids look like so it looks like I can daisy chain them together according to the manual. So I only need one air input, which is that hose going to the front of the truck. 
and two outputs, one for each locker. So I'm going to do that now. When it comes to plumbing, obviously you'd want to make sure that you put sealant on the threads here when these things are connected. This is a thread sealant guys. So with these low pressure systems, I do like to put both Teflon tape and seal uh, and a sealant around it. This ensures that we'll have a leak free connection. End of flashback. And the way I mounted it is basically VHB tape in the back. So that stuck onto the subframe and then this 3D printed bracket to hold it up against the frame. And that bracket is then screwed onto that subframe using some sheet metal screws. So just to point out guys, ARB does use a different threading and pipe thread convention. They use BSP instead of the NPT that we're used to here in the US. So I did have to buy a bushing that allowed me to mate the BSP connections with the NPT connections that I had on the ARB uh, solenoids. So I would highly advise to go to Granger or McMaster when it comes to the push to connect fittings to connect the hoses to the solenoids because the fittings from Amazon actually really sucks. Those are straight fittings and are not tapered. So I had to wrap the threads on them like four or five times to get them to seat and not leak. So I'm actually going to be swapping those out when my fittings come from Granger. So last but not least, let's talk about that relay box. And that relay box is basically a controller for all the lighting systems and any electrical systems on your truck. I'll take out another sheet of paper and we'll diagram just the specific one out. So this controller is basically broken down to two main parts. You have the switch box and the relay box. The switch is what's mounted on the dashboard of the truck and the relay box is what's mounted on the inside of the engine bay. And these two are wired together so this controls this. In this relay box there are six different connections. The first three connections are on the fog lights the light bar and accessory lights, as I stated in my lighting system video. And the bottom three, four, five, six, is connected to the front diff, rear diff, and the air compressor. So further details for how everything is wired and mounted will be in the lighting video, and it will be linked in the description below. And the beauty of these relay boxes are, each of those connections have its own fuse, and its own replaceable relay. So if any of those components fail, it's easily fixable and swappable. So there's definitely a lot of information in this video, guys. And I will put together a wiring diagram as well as a parts list and parts diagram so you guys can copy this exact setup if you wanted to and it makes it a little bit easier for you to put this stuff together. And that will be available on my website. So make sure you check that out at www.kflow-script.com and I would highly suggest watching this a couple times so that you get a better understanding because it does take a little bit more effort to soak in all this information since we're going through plumbing and electrical as well as mechanical mounting of these things. So please do take the time to understand these things by watching it a couple of times. Now if you want me to go through some type of electrical 101 or plumbing 101 for your truck, let me know. That's definitely another video I can put together so you guys can have a little bit more confidence when it comes to doing other non-mechanical type of work. So I would highly advise guys, once you do put this whole system together and you're done with the plumbing, pressurize the system and you use either some Windex or soapy water and spray down all your fittings so that you can find out if you have any types of small leaks. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. I hope you learned a thing or two. So make sure you smash that like, subscribe, and that notification while you're at it. And until next time, peace.